everyday life's happening. Some days are more eventful. Others, living protected with insurance you can depend on changes your life for the better. We insure the people and things you care about. Not Not Agency. We'll help you find the right coverage so when life happens, you have the right insurance protection for your family and business. When life happens, live protected. Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Tuesday, October the 31st, Halloween. And because of Halloween, we've got a scary story for you. Larry Brown. Ooh, I thought you were going to say a scary person. But no, 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 no. You're not scary. Larry oh, Brown is here. But uh, Larry is a, a, a singer, a songwriter, and a storyteller. And today you have a mysterious story, right? Because mysterious things happen. On Halloween. Today. Yeah. Tonight. Tonight or today or this afternoon oh. or with a full moon. So what's the name of the story? Momo. Momo. Yes. Okay. So here is Larry Brown with a story called Momo for Halloween. Now, my cousin's husband, Jerry, was quite an adventurer. And I visited them when they lived down in the Ozarks near West Plains. And, and they were delighted to have me. Took me down in the basement where Jerry had all sort of the trophies and mementos of his world travels and adventures. But I was fascinated because there on the basement wall mounted was the tailgate of a pickup. And I, and I walked over and I was kind of looking at it. And Jerry walked over to me probably fearful that I was going to be jumping to some conclusions about some wild party on the parking lot of a sports arena or whatever. And he just walked up and he said, skunk monster. And I go, what? He said, he said, was there a skunk monster? You know, uh, some folks call it Bigfoot or Sasquatch or Old Man of the Forest or the North American Gorilla uh, or here in Missouri we call it the Missouri Skunk Monster or Missouri Monster, Momo for short. And I'm still looking at him, this isn't making sense. And he says, look up at that tailgate. You see those indentations, those impressions on the back of the tailgate? Let me tell you, and I was listening. Jerry said, I was coming down Highway 19, uh, just, uh, just north of Greer one evening, about sunset, and I thought I saw a bear off the side of the road, and I, and I backed up, went down this gravel road to get a closer picture of the bear, and, and I didn't see him, and as I was turning around and going back out, I looked in my rear view mirror, and there was this creature running toward me. It was seven feet tall, covered with hair. It looked like a gorilla, but it had more of a human face. It was not a black bear. And it ran up, grabbed a hold of the tailgate of my pickup and was slowing me down. And I couldn't make traction on the gravel, he said. He says, but I got to pavement and I thought that the thing was going to jump over in the pickup. But when I hit the pavement, I got traction and the thing let go and turned around and ran back off into the woods and disappeared. And, and, and I said, yeah. And he says, see those indentations? And I could see it looked like handprints in the tailgate. And he said, I hung that on my wall as evidence. I said, evidence, Jerry. He says, people wouldn't believe me. He says, but people did believe me after they saw it. And I said, other people saw it? He says, yeah. He says, it, it, was, a, it was a few weeks after that. I was on Highway uh, 19, and, and it was down near Thomasville. And, and as I was coming down the road, I saw a bunch of cars stopped on the side of the road. And I pulled over, and everybody was out there on the side of the road pointing east toward the trees. And I got out and looked, and he said, there up in the tree, it appeared to be like a little, little monkey, a dark brown monkey up on a branch of a tree. And all of a sudden, the trees were shaking, the bushes were alive, and a big hairy arm reached out and pulled that little creature and, and off into the woods. And, and Jerry said, I knew what it was. I could smell it. It was Momo, the Missouri skunk monster. And of course, everybody else witnessed that too. And Jerry, Jerry went on to tell me just sort of story after story about encounters that people have had with this Bigfoot creature in the Ozarks. Well, I listened pretty intently. And he said, you know, they're nocturnal creatures. And he said, we don't often see them. And, 
And, you know, I was fascinated, but I still had some skepticism. I, I've read the stories about Bigfoot. I've seen some of the Discovery Channel episodes. In fact, I have and have read my own copy of Jeff Meldrum's book, Sasquatch, Legend Meets Science. And, and I know in the 1970s there were sightings of, of this creature up uh, in northeast Missouri, and they were all debunked, you know, up at, at uh, Star Point. <coughs> But still, Jerry was, was, was sort of leading me on, and then he asked the question, do you want to go with me to hunt Momo? And I went, yes. So we set up for later that fall. We met down in Eminence, Missouri, and we loaded my stuff in his, his four-wheel drive pickup, and we took off, off northeast of Eminence and, and off into, the, uh, into Shannon County. And, and it was over, we out, wound up in this area just south of Mauser Mill between Big Creek and, and, uh, and Polk Ridge. And this is an area that one time might have been national forest, one time might have been lead exploration area, but now it was private property and just sort of wilderness that was let go. And we went down this old dirt road, a logging road for miles, and then we got off and, and, and we started to hike. We, we took our equipment and hiked for another couple hours down into the woods to a place that he made a base camp. And, and uh, so he was telling me all about it and we got out a map and he says, here, right here. Because he said, I've heard them, I've seen the telltale signs, we're going to find them right here. Well, we hiked a little further, a couple more hours, and we came to a little, a kind of a little canyon, as close as Missouri Ozarks has to a, to a little uh, uh, slot canyon, and there was a cave. Well, it was really more of a ledge, and underneath was all kinds of stuff. I mean, furniture, lawn furniture, colored objects, like a, like a rat's nest. And he said, they've been here, been here. And I said, Jerry, but, but won't we wake them up? And then Jerry looked at me and says, no, I think they've gone. They've moved on. He says, I don't think they like people. And, and I've not known them to hurt anyone. But well, I was not sure I wanted to be awakening Momo right there in their den. Well, we went back and made base camp. And that night, in the middle of the night, I heard a scream. And I woke up and I, I couldn't tell if it was a dream or I really heard that scream. But Jerry was fast asleep. Well, the next morning we walked back up to the pickup and he was sad and depressed because we hadn't seen, actually, or he hadn't heard Momo. But when we got to the pickup, there was Bigfoot tracks all around the pickup. <laughs> Mud streaked up in the windows. And I don't know if they were threatening us or just telling us that we're there. Of course, we didn't see them, but they saw us. Well, Jerry was going to say he was going to be back to that area and track down. Well, I got an email a few days later from Jerry. He was headed off to Washington State to the Bigfoot Reach Center and, and, and Research Center. And I went back home. And you know, the other day I came home and I'd left a backpack out on the picnic table. And it was gone. And I went to the garden shed and tools had been messed with. And that smell, I heard that smell. And you know, that night I thought I heard a scream. And I've been wondering ever since, does Momo know where I live? Mm, I think Momo does know where you live. I had not heard that story before. Is this a true story, Larry? It's Halloween. You okay. know mysterious right. things happen. Uh, it's a good story. Whether it's true or not, it's a good story. Thank you very much. Larry Brown, if people want uh, your recordings and stories... Get in touch with me, brownstory at hotmail.com and accept something. All right. Happy Halloween to you, Larry. Happy Halloween. Be safe. Bye-bye.